Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to look at some maintenance that you can do to your Linux system, mainly to reclaim hard drive space. Now, for those of you who have used Windows computers, you know that when you first set your Windows computer up, it runs pretty fast. And then as time goes by, it starts getting slower and slower and slower because the machine is actually creating all of this garbage data, a bunch of files uh, that are left over from things that the system does and when you install software and remove it. And the same thing happens in the system registry, which is a big database and it had, has a bunch of junk entries in it. And with a Windows machine, after a certain period of time, when it starts getting slower and slower and slower, then you either have to... Uh, clean all of that stuff off of the machine hopefully without breaking the system or a lot of people just actually reload and start over I mean wipe the hard drive and start from scratch Linux is different in that it really doesn't do that once you get a Linux system installed you get all your software set up you can pretty much use it day in day out and it is not going to become slow and sluggish unless there's some sort of issue going on like a, a program not working properly I'm not going to say it never happens but it it doesn't happen as long as all of the software on the machine is is functioning properly now Linux does leave some things behind as it runs and when it does updates and the main reason that you would want to go in and take it out uh, some of this stuff, the older stuff out, is just to reclaim hard drive space. It won't necessarily make the system run any better. So we're going to look at uh, two things that you can do just to kind of keep things clean and neat and tidy. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the kernel. Now, different distributions of Linux handle kernels differently. And some of them never update the kernel. Now, what is the kernel? The kernel is actually what Linux is. That's where the name comes from. It's the heart of the system, and it is the interface between the software and the hardware, and it allows you to actually use your computer. It's sort of like, I, it's just a big management system for all the hardware and making sure that everything has the resources it needs. The Linux kernel is updated very quickly. Uh, they send out a new version of the Linux kernel from the Linux Foundation about once every two or three months. And this adds new features and security fixes and things like that, which is really cool. But there's a downside to that. Your kernel can, uh, when you get a new one, uh, it, it can break stuff on your system. And so different distributions handle dealing with the kernel differently. Um, in Ubuntu's case, uh, they pretty much maintain their own version of the kernel, especially for the LTS version, uh, the long-term support, which we're looking at here. This is 14.04. When they launched 14.04, they chose uh, kernel 3.13, which was current at the time and they've actually they're they're maintaining it themselves so even though if you install uh ubuntu 14.04 and everybody's uh you know the the latest kernel is 4.0 uh, you're not really running on a terribly old kernel because of course ubuntu is adding security updates and adding new features they're just maintaining it themselves now as these new kernels come in to the system they're left behind on the machine. Some distributions of Linux have tools that allow you to deal with this specifically. You can choose what version of the kernel you want and you can stick with it and then it will, if, when a new kernel comes in, it'll, it'll remove the old one. Uh, there's uh, some derivatives of Ubuntu like Linux Lite that has a tool that takes care of this so you can choose the kernel you want running. But Ubuntu proper pretty much leaves it manually. Linux Mint very rarely, if ever, upgrades the kernel. All of what I'm going to show you will work on Linux Mint, but the chances are you won't need it. All right, so the first thing that you want to do to uh, before we move on to actually taking the old kernels out is uh, figure out what kernel you've got. So I just ran updates. We're on 313.0-53. That is the current Ubuntu 
1404 LTS kernel. So we need to kind of keep that in mind as we move along here. Now, you might be asking, why does it keep the old kernels in the first place? Well, if a kernel does come in and there's a problem and it doesn't work with your system for some reason, uh, there are ways to roll back to uh, uh, the last kernel you had and uh, maybe skip that update and it'll work next time around or something like that. Uh, that's nice if you just keep the the one that's the uh, the the kernel that is you know the the version before the one you're running. But I don't really see why you need to keep uh, kernels four, five, six versions back installed on your machine. Which if you've installed Ubuntu 14.04 and you've never done what I'm doing here, that's what you've got. Now those old kernels lying around don't hurt anything. They just take up drive space and. Um, if you have an SSD, well, <laughs> drive space is pretty dear these days. Uh, we kind of got used to having these large hard drives over the last 10 years or so. And now with solid state drive technology coming along, uh, now we got to start worrying about hard drive space again until they get to the point where they're cheap enough that you can buy like as big a drive as you need. Um, so anyway, I opened up Synaptic Package Manager, which is the tool we're going to use to look at our kernels and uh, it's very easy to find them just type in Linux give it a dash and image and you will see that it finds a bunch of kernels we want to look at the installed versions and we click that again now the first ones that you see are uh, 53.88 And um, so we know that we want to keep everything that has the dash 53 at the end of it. Well, here's dash 52 right here. So we scroll down and see all of the old kernels that are installed. And we just want to do kernels. So we're looking at Linux dash image dash extra or Linux dash image with the number there. And so we go, the last time I did this was when uh, 51 was installed. Now, if you want to be super safe about it, like you've just installed the new kernel, you could leave the last version on the machine. In this case, that would be dash 52 that you see there. But I'm pretty confident that this kernel's working. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to highlight the last two kernels and the last two extras there. And we're going to set this to do a complete removal. And once that gets marked, come up here, because we're not quite done. There's another uh, component that we need to get rid of. And that's headers, which is actually part of the kernel. It's just a separate file. You don't absolutely need it to run a system, uh, but Ubuntu leaves it there. It's for... Um, developers to who build packages uh, you know actually compile from code it has to be on the machine so that the machine knows what kernel to compile for so we're gonna do the installed version once again and it's the same deal come down to 5.2 and we're gonna highlight all of those files mark for complete removal now once that's done hit apply and it's going to warn me that it's going to take them off the system. And away we go. We're removing the old kernels now. And that will free up quite a bit of hard drive space. Each one of those kernels and the associated files that goes along with it, uh, they take up uh, quite a bit of space in the hundreds of megabytes so that will reclaim some space on my system drive so now that we have removed our kernel there's another thing I want to show you I'm going to show you a really interesting application um, if you've used Windows you might find it somewhat familiar it might remind you of a program called CCleaner and it's my preferred tool uh, for managing files on the system I can go ahead and exit this terminal for now we'll need it back but I'll get it out of the way 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look for an application here called BleachBit. This does not come installed by default with Ubuntu. And you'll see we have two versions here. The first one says BleachBit as root, and this one is just BleachBit. Let's run that one first so I can show you what it does. And I have never run it before because I usually do not run it in this mode. But what this will allow you to do is clear out caches on your browsers, temporary files, things like that on your system. Uh, you notice here we have Chromium and there's Firefox. There's your Flash cache, Google Chrome, LibreOffice, just all kinds of stuff and then, and then a bunch of system things here. Now I don't use it in this mode because if I'm going to clear a cache in the browser I do it from the browser and uh, this is just if you just want to clear out all of your caches you can do it here and we're gonna look more at these settings here because this actually won't do anything in this mode we're gonna run it as um, administrator so we can do bleach bit as root and it asks for my password this does it uh, for the entire system and this is the one that I usually use um, so what we have checked here uh, is the, your apt tool which is the software manager for Debian based Linux and Ubuntu and uh, apt is pretty good about keeping up with itself and not keeping a lot of junk files but what it will do is every time that you download a package it hangs on to the installation file puts it in a, a folder on your system drive just in case you need it again a lot of times if you have a program that's not functioning properly on your system you can open up your synaptic package manager you can mark that for reinstallation it'll fix the problem and if it's already on the drive then it doesn't have to download it again from the net or if uh, the program that is in question is one that is needed to get you on the internet you can reinstall it restart your system and it'll work so it's already on the system which is nice uh, but of course those files take up space and so you can choose these apt clean tools here to get rid of some of those you can get a uh, get rid of backup files it'll clean out the temporary uh, folders the directory um, and then we have some system things here cache and you can go through here and it will pretty much explain what all of this does some of these options take a long time and um, I don't even bother with it like free disk space will write zeros on all the free space in the disk that takes forever uh, old localizations that really doesn't bother the system the clipboard <laughs> we, we don't need to change that and um, so anyway there's a lot of good documentation about this so if I run a preview here it will tell me um, all of the files that it's going to remove and you can scan down through the list and as you can see it'll take a lot of cached files anything that's downloaded it's a very cool utility so if you run it this way you're doing it for the entire system you're just basically doing the base system if you run it uh, just bleach bit not as root uh, then you can take out things like browser caches and stuff like that I don't bother with that I let it run uh, if I'm going to take the cache out of the browser I'll do it from the browser of course if the browsers not working it's a nice to have a tool that allows you to do it so that's pretty cool right there it's called bleach bit and run it once in a great while um, just to reclaim some drive space so the next thing we want to talk about before we close up the video is uh, actually a bit of a Linux myth that I have to dispel and that is that uh, one of the things that people will tell you about Linux is that you never have to defragment your hard drive. Well, that is actually true and it's false at the same time. Because the correct answer is it depends. Okay, um, the hard drives in Ubuntu based systems are usually formatted with the ext4 file system and that's the one that's pretty much used across most Linux distributions by default um, especially the ones that you'll find on a desktop and ext4 is a very good system it's very stable and um, 
it also does a very good job of managing the free space on the drive in such a way that it actually does not fragment files. Um, if you are a Windows user, you'll know that NTFS is pretty bad about fragmenting itself as it reads and writes files over time and uh, you have to run the defrag utility on Windows. As a matter of fact, since like I think Windows Vista, that has been something that runs in the background and you can schedule it to do every week. Linux, you don't have to do that because uh, the ext4 file system usually takes really good care of itself. But if you have some unique situations you're dealing with, like um, you have a large number of very big files like video files or something like that then you might want to defragment the drive every now and again because when ext4 is trying to figure out where to write big files it can fragment those if you have a hard drive that is close to being like 80 percent full and the ext4 file system doesn't have that free space to give room for files to grow which is how it keeps things uh, not fragmented to begin with then as uh, you've got a lot of input and output on the drive especially on servers it might benefit you a little bit to defragment that drive just to get everything straight and give the operating uh, give the uh, file system a little bit more space to work so but uh, the truth of the matter is for the average desktop user and just like home stuff um, you probably will never ever ever have to do this as a matter of fact I ran one Linux system for three years and never did this and then when I after three years when I did check to see whether I needed to do it then it was actually came up and said that it was fine and there was no fragmentation at all so anyway I'm gonna show you anyway and this is done from the terminal now if you have a solid state hard drive on your machine you do not need to defragment it at all as a matter of fact you shouldn't even try to do this um, actually the E4 defrag program will not let you do it okay so we're going to uh, take a look at E4 defrag and the command is uh, right here it is sudo E4 defrag space dash C and we're gonna give it a drive to look at now if you have an SSD of course you don't do this and I have one spinning drive so that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna look at this drive and it tells me that there is no fragmentation whatsoever if I did want to uh, run the defragmenter on this drive I would simply use the same command but I would drop the uh, dash C so yes and do remember to use uh, the sudo privileges um, because you have to run this as super user and only run it on spinning hard drives now even if your drive comes up here as you can see as you can see down here it says uh, uh, that 0 to 30 is no problem even if it comes up and it says that it's 30 percent fragmented and uh, you defrag it uh, chances are you're not going to see a huge difference in performance uh, just simply because uh, the ext4 file system is really good about how it uh, it, it uh, writes and reads files and even if there is some fragmentation on the drive uh, it's not going to slow things down all that much but it's something that's nice to know just in case you ever need it so there you go yeah, type that correctly so there you go it's a look around uh, some Linux maintenance things to keep in mind and uh, of course, if you have comments, suggestions, questions, be very happy to hear from you. And also, if you'd like to know how I can get you started with Ubuntu Linux, uh, just check out easylinux.com, and the uh, link is in the description below the video. Thank you for watching. We'll talk again soon.